House. I'm waiting with eager anticipation this 12-round heavyweight bout between Ron Lyle and Jerry Quarry. And working with me tonight, and it will be my pleasure, is John Condon, Public Relations Director for Madison Square Garden Boxing. John? John, it looks like a real good night here at Madison Square Garden. We have about 16, maybe 17,000 people in the garden. Uh, there's a real fight fever here in the garden. Uh, of course, a lot of them have come to see Ron Lyle, who is the oddity here tonight, because He's coming in here from Denver like a storm. He's won 19 fights. He's undefeated. He's knocked out 17 opponents. And he's the man that everybody wants to see. They want to find out if Ron Lyle is for real. Jerry Quarry, of course, the veteran, 27 years old. He's actually about three years younger than, uh, than Ron Lyle. But Jerry has been around a long time. And he is the man who will or will not stop Ron Lyle's march. John will return to Madison Square Garden right after this message. under a clear sky, riding under a strong sun, moving under your own steam, building a more than one beer thirst. A thirst that won't settle for just one beer. A thirst that won't settle for just any beer. A thirst that's just begging for Schaefer. Schaefer gives you flavor that keeps coming on beer after frosty beer. So Schaefer's a beer that's a cut above the others. And that's the beer you've got coming. Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. Now here's a man who has literally fought his way up from the depths. He's Ron Lyle, undefeated knockout sensation from Denver, Colorado, who took up boxing while serving a prison sentence for second-degree murder. Paroled after seven and a half years, he went into amateur boxing under the guidance of Bill Daniels, Denver sportsman millionaire, and went on to win the amateur championship. As a pro, his explosive power has scored 17 knockouts in his 19 bouts. Last year, he found the mark, knocking out straight, straight opponents ranking number four among the heavyweights and being named fighter of the year by the WBA. He stands six feet three and a half and was born in Dayton, Ohio. And here's the man who blocks Lyle Path, Jerry Quarry. He could be the spoiler tonight and he's got the punch to do it. He's got the experience too. Jerry has won 44 of his 54 fights with six losses and four draws. He has racked up 26 KOs and was stopped four times. His losses have been to the best. Muhammad Ali twice, Joe Frazier for the title, Jimmy Ellis, Eddie Machen, and George Chevallo. Quarry's biggest win over Floyd Patterson. Quarry stands a half inch over six feet, was born in Los Angeles in 1945, now lives in Marina del Rey, California. The winner of this bout could be projected into a title bout with new heavyweight champion George Foreman. Now let's go up into the center of the ring and Joe Bostic. Great impression. Now ready to Turn professional, Dwayne Bobby. Dwayne Bobby. Dwayne Bobby. Remember the United States Olympic team now in the Ron Lyle stable. And in our audience tonight, always Bostic a favorite personality. Bostic is pointing out some of the people in our audience. There are many uh, former champion, champions here. Rocky Graziano. Uh, Rocky Graziano. Rocky Graziano. I just Graziano. Got we're just moments away from the 12-round heavyweight fight between Jerry Quarry of Marina Del Rey, California, and Ron Lyle of Denver. This fight will decide the future of both fighters, at least as far as their prospects as a heavyweight contender is concerned. Jerry and Quarry, now, the veteran against Ron Lyle, the 30-year-old up-and-coming challenger. The feature headline event of the evening... 12 rounds. The officials here have been assigned by the New York State Athletic Commission. And incidentally, our two newest commissioners are here. We'd like you to meet them. Commissioner Rodriguez and Commissioner Sherwood. Right over here, the two new members of the New York State Athletic Commission. Here are the officials whom the New York State 
Athletic Commission. As a sign here for our feature event tonight, our timekeeper is Freddie Abiatello. Our judges are Tony Castellano and Bill Richt, counting for the knockdowns at the bell, Herbie Kronowitz, and our referee for our feature event, coming to us from Puerto Rico, is Mr. Wally Schmidt. Mr. Wally Schmidt. Waldemir Schmidt from Puerto Rico, a rather unusual name for a Puerto Rican. And now, the principals in this feature event, distance 12 rounds, coming to us from residing in New York City at 200 pounds even. He's wearing green trunks. Interesting, Waldemir Schmidt from Puerto Hello, Rico. Jerry, you want to fight what run on the rules and regulations of the New York State Athletic Puerto Commission? Puerto Rican accent. I expect this to be a tough fight, but I also expect this to be a clean fight. You shall follow my instructions at all times. There will be no kidney punch or rugby punch. No holding, pushing or pulling. Shake hands and good luck to both of you. Did all right, Waldemir Schmidt. Scoring here in New York on a rounds basis with a supplementary point system that the rounds come out even on an official's card. The mandatory eight count is in effect. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The referee and two judges will do the scoring. Lyle and the uh, white trunks, the green trunks won by Quarry. Lyle making his Madison Square Garden debut and he's brought out almost a packed house. Boys are power punchers. They both feature the left hook. The three knockdown rule is in effect. If a man is fought at or near the bell, he cannot be saved by the bell. He must arise before the count of ten, even if the bell is rung, or be counted out except in the last round. Both boys feature the left hook. Both are good counter, counter punchers. Lyle is probably the shorter puncher of the two, even though he has the longer reach by a couple of inches. Quarry is a good double hooker. He'll try to hook to the body and then to the head. He'll try to get that right hand under the body if he can. Lyle probably will go to the head with both hands. right by Quarry. Quarry is not awed by Lyle's reputation, apparently. The round is half over. in at apparently good weights for him. doubling up on his punches now, the left and the right, and he's countering well. Quarry's experience is standing him in good stead now, but he just took a rocking left. Whether he can stand up under Lyle's punches remain to be seen. Wally Schmidt, the referee, gets him apart. Half a minute to go in the round. It's a 12-rounder. Very few expect it to go that far. Ten seconds to 
to go in the round. Hey guys, seen that new driver yet? Yeah, let's give him the business. Right. Make him sing this Schaefer jingle. Hey, here he is now. Okay, you, up on the barrel. Okay, rookie, come on. Every new man's got to sing the Schaefer jingle. But sing. Come on, sing. You better sing, boy. Schaefer hey, is the you. one beer to no, have no. when you're Ooh. having more than once. Sing. The most rewarding flavor in this man's world for people who are having fun. Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. Was that all right? Not bad, kid. Round two at Madison Square Garden, undefeated Ron Lyle. The lighter trunks, Jerry Quarry in the green trunks, the referee Wally Schmidt. Quarry seemed to have an edge in round one. Quarry is hoping that Lyle will drop those gloves, as MacArthur Foster did in his fight with him. When he dropped them, Mac took a hard punch and that was it. bit low that punch by Quarry. Quarry hasn't always won at Madison Square Garden, but he's always brought out a crowd and he did so tonight, as did Ron Lyle. Quarry fighting very confidently now maybe a bit carelessly. Lyle seems to be biding his time. Now he's making use of his reach with the jab. Lyle didn't use the jab at all in the first round, but he's scoring with it here. Again. Jerry seems to be looking for a spot to get his right hand in. And he did. A minute to go in the round. Lyle showed his punching power there. He raked Quarry in Lyle's corner. seems to show a little more respect for Lyle now. Lyle has never been knocked down in a 19-bout professional career. Ten seconds to go in the round. some of the action in that last round. This is Jerry Quarry. He's in a corner now. And Lyle, this is about the two-minute mark in the round. And Lyle caught Jerry with a real good left hand there. He's pouring it on. This is the first time in the first two rounds that he showed uh, any part of his punching power. Right there. That's Jerry Quarry with his back to us. 
Harry's corner. Gil Clancy is bending over talking to him in the corner. Uh, it's also Ernie King and Howard Albert. Clancy seems to be telling him that he wants him to throw more punches to the body. Round three at Madison Square Garden. Barry came out fast, as you saw. He's got the green trunks. Black tr the dark trunks, if you're looking in black and white. Ron Lyle has the white trunks with the stars on the blue border down the side. Lyle is now finding Quarry with a very, very good left jab. Lyle brought along in fine shape by Bobby Lewis, coach of the Olympic team. the first time Quarry has backed away in the fight. Now Quarry's jab is pistoning in there. Two minutes to go in the round. Round three of a 12-rounder. Madison Square Garden almost packed for this big bout. is moving and sticking now and doing it well. he can lead with his right and score with it and heavily less than a minute to go in round three Boxing smartly at the moment. Almost turned him around. Every so often, Lyle comes in with a powder keg. Quarry got careless and was tagged. Ten seconds to go in the round.
scheduled for 12 rounds this bout. Maybe the winner will go on to meet George Foreman for the title. about half over round four the longest Lyle has gone in a fight is ten rounds Quarry has been on over the 15 round route a few times and he's winding up with the body punches now Quarry is hurting Lyle, but he sure is bothering him. Lyle can shorten up on his punches and score with them. Quarry needs a little room. This is the best shape we've seen Quarry in in a long time. Lyle, right on the chops. Quarry is back there. Now it's a battle of attrition, apparently. Ten seconds to go in the round. Ron Lyle seems to be uh, uh, in a little better shape right now than Jerry Quarry. Jerry has taken quite a few good punches. Jerry is, uh, is fighting back. He's doing actually more fighting than Ron Lyle. But Ron Lyle is picking his spots. He's not wasting punches. He's not throwing any unnecessary punches. He's boxing a lot better than most people thought he could. He was advertised as a puncher. And uh, nobody talked about his boxing ability, but he's demonstrated here tonight in these first four rounds at least that he's a pretty good boxer. He seems to be uh, uh, just toying with Jerry. He puts his two hands out in front of him, a la Muhammad Ali, although not quite as good as a la Muhammad Ali. And he's trying to get the big punch across. Dunphy with John Condon in Madison Square Garden. Round five. Twelve round bout. Jerry Quarry in the green trunks. Ron Lyle in the light trunks. The referee, Waldemir Schmidt. go to boxing for a moment instead of slugging. They both show they have good jabs. Lyle keeping Jerry away with that fending left hand, bringing in a good crossed right. Lyle six three and a half. Jerry about a half inch over six feet. Two minutes to go in round five. has gone to hitting and running again. His most vulnerable position is when he gets caught on the ropes, which he just did. And he's there again. When they're out in the center of the ring, Quarry does very well. When he gets caught on the ropes, it's Lyle who does well. Is trying to get him there now. A 
A minute to go in the round. are scoring with heavy punches. Lyle shows he's got a good arsenal. A good jab, a good hook. He took a smashing right that hurt him. And Lyle was forced to hold on. Jerry Quarry hurt him, but Lyle paddled back himself. Ten seconds to go in this good round. Lyle seems to be in trouble. The crowd sets up a roar as round six gets underway. That five was a dandy. A big round for Quarry. And Lyle is getting underway fast in this round. It's a 12 round bout. Condition may well be the order of the day in this fight. They both have taken heavy leather. He seems to be coasting for a moment. Not now, though. Quarry has taken to working on Lyle's unprotected body. Lyle always dangerous with those short, jolting punches. Two minutes left in round six. that he can box as well as slug. Quarry seems to have lost his rhythm for the moment and is off balance from those jabs. being defeated by Muhammad Ali. He's doing pretty well right now. Quarry's experience is paying off here. He's finding the openings. Lyle isn't. Lyle was told to keep them up. Ten seconds to go in this round. The bell. Well, they say big fights bring out big people, and in our press section tonight, we have very many nationally known writers. Dave Anderson is here from the New York Times. Uh, the Daily is here from the same paper, so is Red Smith, so the New York Times is well represented. Dick Young is here from the Daily News, as well as Bill Gallo, the world-famous cartoonist for the Daily News. Barney Nagler, I see on the far side of the ring, and uh, quite a few others. Milt Gross is here from the New York Post. 
I think Mari Janoff from the Long Island Press is here somewhere in the audience. Uh, Danny Farrell, a prize-winning uh, photographer over on the other side. So we have the cream of the uh, journalism fraternity here tonight to see this big fight. John Dunphy with John Condon at ringside coming up to round seven. And Jerry Quarry has come on big in the last two rounds. It is a 12-round bout. Lyle in the lighter trunks, Quarry shorter of the two by three inches in the green trunks. befuddled. Lyle can only hope to counter big. Two minutes to go in round seven. No knockdowns. have been ruffled a few times. Miles scores well with those short jolting rights. And Flurry is now teeing off. Getting the left hook past the right glove of Lyle. Corey may have been shaken up there a little bit. It looked a little funny for a moment. A minute to go on the round. giving a superb exhibition of offensive boxing. Very effective aggressiveness. Lyle always dangerous. He's got the power. Ten seconds to go on the round. Bell. You're looking at a more than one beer man. A man who's building a more than one beer thirst. When this day is over, he'll be good for a couple of beers. That's why he'll be good for Schaefer. Schaefer's brewed with a rare quality of consistency that no other beer can match. Brewed to give you flavor that doesn't fade. Pleasure that stays consistently bright, consistently rewarding, first glass to last. Schaefer's brewed for the more than one beer man. The man with a more than one beer thirst. Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're happy. Round eight of the big one. Ron Lyle undefeated. 19 victories, 17 knockouts. Jerry Quarry has fought the best in the division. 26 knockouts and 44 victories. Six defeats and four draws. Jerry Quarry wearing the green trunks. Ron Lyle the white trunks. Quarry has picked up a few points in the last few rounds. That's my unofficial opinion. The judges and the referee will do the scoring. A very 
very low blow by Clory, real low. I guess Lyle had his back to the referee. Waldemir didn't seem to see it. That was on the borderline. Clory has mixed up his attack well. He's played possum a few times. He's moved in, he's moved out, and he's moved away. Then he's come back with flurries. Both boys have been hit with a variety of punches. Uppercuts, hooks, jabs, short jolting rights. Half the round is over. He took a, a right to the body that it certainly is going to do him no good later. Quarry mad at himself for taking those punches. Now let's see if he gets his Irish up. He's been known to do that in the past. Lyle plodding along. He's warned to keep up his punches. He apologizes. They're both told to keep them up. Less than a minute to go in the round. Glory doesn't seem to have the zip in his punches that he did earlier, but he's scoring. They, they both have proved that they can take a punch. the ropes is being battered. Ten seconds to go in the round. Lyle now fighting back. A big round for Quarry. There's the bell. There's Lyle walking back to his corner. He didn't seem to be staggering. And he didn't use the ropes as a guide. But he was hurt in that round. Let's take a look at it. That's Lyle with his back to the camera. Jerry coming on, working inside. There's the left hook that really hurt him. Almost upset him, put him right into the ropes. Now he stays in this corner for the rest of the round. Jerry Quarry trying to pick his spot, looking for the opening, looking for the one punch that will end the fight. He's got Lyle in real bad trouble right here, and he's doing things just the way he should do them, the body and the head. Hill the body and the head dies. There it is. That's the action in the eighth round. Here it is, round nine at Madison Square Garden, and this huge crowd is in a bedlam. Jerry Quarry was in seconds of scoring a drastic upset a few moments ago. And Jerry is starting to lose his trunks. He must be losing weight. Look at the trunks sagging down. He now has the green trunks with the white and red borders. I don't think those trunks are going to last the round. He's trying to fight the fight and keep the trunks up at the same time. Round nine of a 12-rounder. Quarry teeing off. Lyle also scores heavily, but Quarry outpunches him. Both taking it. Round nine, about half over. Referee Wallace. 
Wally Smith. Quarry keeps pounding that unprotected left side with his right hand. Quarry is taking it in this round also. Lyle is dishing it out. Big flurry for Quarry with a minute to go. Lyle's body is wide open at times. And some of them are landing on Lyle's arms. I.A. Whisker. almost over. Ten seconds to go. with John Condon at ringside at Madison Square Garden, Jerry Quarry, Ron Lyle. Quarry starting to bounce around now. Maybe they told him to stay at long range. They may think he can win it on points. But Jerry is now starting to bounce a little bit. And his trunks are half an inch lower than they were at the previous round. Beautiful straight right by Lyle. He's always dangerous. But Quarry has stayed up well under the punches. So has Lyle. This is round 10 of a 12-round bout. like the late Sonny Liston the way he comes in there. Not too much happening at the moment. hook and a right cross by Quarry. Flush. Lyle proves a good counter puncher. Quarry's piling up the points. A minute to go in round 10.
boys in tremendous condition. Round almost over. Ten seconds to go. The bell. seems to be the more relaxed fighter of the two. Of course, Jerry Quarry has set the pace in this fight. Uh, Ron Lyle has been picking his spots, waiting to throw the punches. From inside, he just takes his time, uses his elbows a lot. But Jerry Quarry is the man who has made this fight, I would have to say. He's the one who has forced the fight and uh, the one who has thrown the most punches. Whether they were the most effective punches or not will be decided by the judges and the referee at the end of the fight. That's Ron Lyle in his corner. And they're looking him over now. That's Pat Calavito with his back to us. And that's Bobby Lewis right in front of Ron Lyle. Trying to uh, give him a few last-minute instructions. He tell him what he thinks he's doing wrong. Try to get him come out and fight his fight. Don Dunphy at ringside. Round 11. 12 round bout. Quarry's got a new pair of trunks, I believe. Either that or that somebody gave him a safe. They're tucked in his belt. I thought maybe he had a safety pin. Quarry has been pulling away in the last couple of rounds. as mentioned, Lyle is relaxed. He doesn't seem to have gardenitis, which affects a, a great many good fighters who come in here with superb records and then tighten up. But Quarry is something else again, the tried and true veteran. He's been through the wars and he knows what to do. Quarry has fought an amazingly good fight tonight, up to now. Plus with heavyweights, anything can happen all of a sudden since both boys are power punchers. Quarry again boxing beautifully on the attack, picking his spots. And now Lyle comes back. Great punches for the Californian. There's blood on Quarry's left shoulder and I don't see where it's coming from. I imagine it's from Lyle. Lyle bleeding a little from the nostrils. Yes, I see it now. That's the first blood of the fight. A minute to go in round 11 of a 12 rounder. to go in this round. The pace slows up a little. Lyle looking to get in there with the knockout punch to turn things his favor if he can. Wari rolling with them. Now Lyle is beginning to show a lot of respect for Jerry Quarry. Something Quarry's not showing for him. Ten seconds to go in the round. The bell. And Jerry Quarry bounces to his corner. He's a tired fighter, but he realizes there's only one more round left in this. This is the 12th and final round coming up, and Jerry Quarry is fighting for his professional life. He must win to stay in contention as a heavyweight contender and get his third chance at the world heavyweight title. He's had two chances. He's lost one to James J. Ellis, and he lost another one to Joe Fraser. 
over in Lyle's corner now. He seems fresh. He has a uh, bloodied nose a little bit. They're putting a little Vaseline under his eyes, although there are no marks on his eyes. He seems to be fresh, and he looks pleadingly at Bobby Lewis to find out what is wrong. What am I doing wrong, or what should I do to win this fight? because he looks, he has that look in his eye. Quarry has bounced right back into the center of the heavyweight picture. Quarry has not been really hurt during the fight. Lyle has been hurt. to go in the round. Quarry took himself up to the Concord Hotel for training and it has paid off. This is the best he's looked in a long time. And he's still young at 27. This round is half over. Win or lose, Lyle will be back in the picture. You can bet on that. He's a good, good fighter. Ably handled in New York by our good friend Irwin Rossi. Harry Markson and Teddy Brenner of Madison Square Garden should get a couple of good fights out of this one. Less than a minute to go in the fight now. And the crowd of about 17,000 is uproaring. Rory bouncing around as though he were in training. Experience has paid off in this fight. And Quarry had the experience. You can't beat it. Half a minute to go. Scoring will be on a rounds basis with a supplementary point system if the rounds come out even on an official's card. There will be no knockout. Ten seconds to go in the round. There it is. The twelfth and final round is over. Hugh Clancy, Howard Albert, and Ernie King rush over to congratulate Jerry Quarry. Apparently, they think he has won the fight. And I'll say, John, that it was some fight. John, I want to tell you, there was some question about Jerry Quarry's condition, whether or not he could get into condition for this fight. He certainly showed that he did get into good condition in this last round. He boxed around the ring like a lightweight. He was in the best condition that I have seen him in in many, many years. The man who finished up in... in well, not poor condition, but he was tired, and he was hurt in the last round. Jerry hit him with left jabs, and he hit him with right crosses, almost at will. And Ron Lyle, in his corner, is wondering now, will his undefeated string continue, or is it all over for him? Will he have to start all over? Jerry Quarry must be a happy man. He must have some, some good thoughts in his mind. I'm sure that he thinks he won the fight.
and developed him and helped him in his last two fights, two winning fights, is with him, and they're both very happy. Ron Lyle walking over to congratulate Jerry Quarry. There's no love lost between these two fellas in the early part of their training. They call each other quite a few names. And at the weigh-in this afternoon, it was the same thing. But right now, they're buddy-buddy up in the ring, and I'm sure that Ron Lyle is a very disappointed man. Jerry Quarry is now in a position where he can become a leading challenger for George Foreman's world heavyweight crown. It has been a pleasure to bring this fight to you with John Dunphy and I. Jerry Quarry walking around the ring. There he is with his hands up in the air. Very happy about the whole thing. He walks over again to Ron Lyle, shakes his hand, and they're friendly now. The season, Billy Kidd of the United States and Kiki Cutter on the girls' side, both of whom might well have a solid chance for World Cup medals this year, will be on hand along with the rest of the American team going against Austria's Carl Schranz, the current uh, World Cup champion, and all of the other top Europeans. And the week after that, which will be December 27th, right between Christmas and New Year's, we're going to present our show about the decade of sports. Uh, the our review of the 60s, a 10-year explosion in sports, actually. We'll be showing you more than 100 of the top moments that occurred during that time. However, the subject of the moment is Las Vegas fighting Liston against Martin and Hazleton going in to do his best against George Foreman. Our reporter at ringside is our peripatetic chronicler of the boxing scene, Howard Cosell. Okay, Howard. Thank you very much, Jim McKay. And Jim has told you very quickly about the two fights we'll be seeing here in the great showroom of the spanking new international hotel in Las Vegas. Up in the ring right now is that young American who carried the flag about the ring in Mexico City when they won the gold medal in the heavyweight classification. You're looking at George Foreman.